morning, Quackcopter101 here, and today's shout out goes to Mr. Notroll2551. Mr. Notroll was first to say first to one of my recent videos, and this one's a shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quackcopter101 here, and I have a really neat aircraft for you today, folks. This is the YF 350 Sea Land Air Amphibious Airplane. Okay, it is a brush motor airplane, but what's special about it is this is the first brush motor that I've seen that is actually is capable of taking off from water. You know, I've seen a lot of these sea land airs come out, uh, especially with brushed motors, and uh, none of them had the power to lift off the ground. This one does, and, and for a very good reason. This is the design of this thing is is excellent. Now, I want to talk about that here shortly, but let's get into it. First of all, it's ready to fly. It comes out of the box, all fully assembled. You do not need to assemble this airplane, okay? Like a lot of other airplanes, you need to, you know, they say you're ready to fly after you spend about an hour putting them together. <laughs> not this one. This one's all set, ready to go. You just need to put batteries in it, charge up the battery for it, plug it in, and away you go. It weighs only 56 grams. What does that mean? That means this airplane does not require registration in nearly every country that I can think of, okay? Um, additionally, being fit less than 56 grams, it does not require that trust certificate that you need to get from the FAA in the United States, nor does it require remote ID, okay? You can just fly this. As long as you stay outside five miles from an airport outdoors, um, you should be good to fly this, okay, <laughs> without any additional uh, registration requirements required for this thing. It's made out of crash-resistant EPP foam, so it should take a beating for beginner flyers out there. Has a two nine hundred ninety millimeter wingspan, and um, let's talk about being sea land air. How does it do it? Well, notice these skids and this. Uh, it has a great deal of distance between the ground surface or the water surface or whatever you're taking off from and the wing itself. This will keep the aircraft out of the water, in effect so that you're able to get what's called ground effect lift. This will optimize ground effect lift. And what is ground effect? It's a cushion of air as this thing moves forward. Air is being pushed underneath the aircraft along as with over the aircraft. But that air underneath creates a cushion, cushioning effect that actually provides additional lift to help bring it up off the ground or off the water. I tried this on my carpet. Okay. <laughs> this thing took off right in my living room <laughs> quite readily. So I was surprised how well these skids work. These skids work very well. So I expect this to be able to take off from grass, from just about anything. I wouldn't use it on uh, concrete, though, or asphalt, because that would probably damage the skids. But taking off of grass, it should do such, and I'm going to try to do such tomorrow. Unfortunately, I, although I live in Erie, PA, I do not have any still water that's in a area that I can fly. I can go down to Prescott State Park and try to fly it, but... You're not allowed to do that at <laughs> Prescott State Park. None of the Pennsylvania State Parks let you fly drones or airplanes. Well, there is a couple, but uh, they have special areas. But where I live, the, the state parks don't need to do it. And uh, all the areas that have calm enough water to fly from um, do not let you do it around here or let you fly. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to demonstrate the, the amphibious part, but I will be able to demonstrate it taking off from grass. And that would be impressive if this can actually take off from grass. You can know right away that this will also be able to take off from water if it can do that. So, okay, we talked about ground of effect. I haven't talked about the next thing about this design. Um, it has dihedral. Notice those, these wingtips on the end here. These help to stabilize the aircraft naturally in flight. You know, if, you, if it tilts to the left, these actually help try to bring it back to level flight. In addition to the dihedral helping you, this has built-in gyro. Okay, let me open up the, the bay here. There's its flight control board, folks. This little flight control board has a built-in gyroscope or gyroscopic stabilization system, along with, uh, I think it's 6G stabilization. That includes uh, accelerometers, too. But that will help include or help level the aircraft uh, in flight. Now, how does that do that with a two-channel? This is a two-channel aircraft. I'm going to talk about that here shortly. Differential thrust aircraft. What it does is, it increases, say if you want to turn, or if the aircraft is tilting to the right, this motor will increase speed to increase lift on the, the uh, right side to li help lift that right wing and level it. Same goes vice versa. If it's tilting to the left and you want to stabilize it or let go of the sticks, it will stabilize itself by increasing 
increasing the speed on this motor to increase lift to, to level it and bring it level like that. Additionally, if it goes into fugoid oscillations up and down like that, um, when, as it's going up like this, both motors will decrease speed to help bring the nose down. And if it's going downward in a fugoid oscillation, the motors will increase speed to help bring the nose up and try to level it. Level it. Now, that being said, I'm still going to bring some putty with me tomorrow because <laughs> um, these two-channel uh, aircraft sometimes have problems with the fugoid oscillations. Even though it tries to, to level them off, um, there's still some problems sometimes if it's not correct. If the center of gravity is not correct on these, it's still will go porpoise a bit, porpoising fugoid oscillations. So the way to, get, to correct that, especially if it's uh, uh, tail heavy where it's mostly trying to climb, you put some weight on the nose. And if it's tail heavy where it goes into the ground right away if, after you launch it, you put some weight on the tail. And we'll try to demonstrate that if that becomes a problem tomorrow when we go take this out to fly. Now, this is powered. Again, I mentioned these uh, brushed motors. These brushed motors are 8520 brushed motors. They're very powerful, but they're very also very common. So you should be able to find replacement motors if these do burn out someday on you. Um, let's see, I talked about, I haven't talked about the battery. It's powered by a 3.7 volt, 500 milliamp per hour battery. That's probably, it's supposed to give you 10 minutes of flight time. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but we'll find out when we go in the air. But I want to show you one other thing. This does have LED lights. Let's plug this in to show you those LED lights. And they're very bright and pretty. <laughs> okay, multicolored. Let's turn on the transmitter and show you the lights. Now you can turn them on and off with the transmitter with this button here see and that gives you a little bit more uh battery power to fly if you wish to turn off those lights but i think i'll keep them on they they really don't take much more power but <laughs> give you an extra minute i bet if you take turn it off though of flight time okay let's unplug these lights and find or finish this with going over what you get in the box and things um you get this instruction manual in the box um, the only English in this instruction manual is the words instruction manual. <laughs> Everything's in Chinese, folks. I had to go through this with my phone using Google Translate and my uh, camera on my phone, and I was able to decipher what these switches are. But what we got on the, the controller is it's a basic two-channel differential thrust controller. This is throttle. This is the rudder. Turn left, turn right. This is the on-off switch, and you uh, bind it to the aircraft by moving the throttle up and down, and that connects the controller to the aircraft. This button here is for rates. Let me double-check that. I wrote it down here. Confirm it. Uh, no, that's lights. This is your lights button. It turns lights on and off. This button here is for the rates. Um, it, you can make it more snappy or a flyer by pressing this button here, and uh, it'll, it'll bank angle. The bank angles will increase. Uh, when you do that, and it helps you make tighter turns with the aircraft. Um, there, if it does drift left or right, there is a trim trim buttons. This is left trim and right trim. I don't expect to be that to be a problem since they also added stabilization system to the aircraft. But uh, just in case it does move left or right, uncommanded, you can fix that with these trim buttons on the controller. Uh, the range on this controller is predicted to be at 170 meters. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, because it's only powered by three AAA batteries. Let me see if I can open this up to show you these high-quality AAA batteries I got in there from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> but 170 meters is way overkill for this little airplane. Uh, you're not going to be able to see this airplane past 70 meters, let's put it that way. So um, that's way overkill. But that's, that's about it. Now let's go uh, over what you get in the box. I mentioned the controller, the instruction manual, the aircraft battery and you get a controller there is something missing here that you don't get or at least i didn't get it with mine and that is spare propellers folks i did not get any spare propellers with mine and i don't know if it does come with spare propellers or not but for those of you that are interested in getting spares these are just little uh 65 millimeter uh, bulldoze props uh for quadcopters so i'm sure you can find these they're uh, these are also quite common these type of uh, propellers so you should be able to find spares that will fit on these little 8520 motors to give you the thrust you need to fly this airplane. So that is the YF-350. Let's take it out into the field, folks, and see how it flies. I'm excited. This this will be pretty cool if it, if it flies great. <laughs> if it doesn't fly great, eh, <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, hope you enjoy this flight, folks. 
Good morning, Quackcopter 101 here, and welcome to the test flight of the YF350. That's a, yeah, 350. Lancy Air. Okay, we're going to uh, test the flight here at uh, Pleasant Ridge Park here in the border between Girard and Fairview, PA. And uh, we're going to fly it. We're going to try to fly off of this grassy field here. See if it can take off from grass. If it can take off from grass, then you know it can take off from water. Okay, so let's try it. Okay, first thing we need to do is plug in the battery. Let me do such. Now, I did bring some putty with me today in case we notice some few good oscillations on this uh, airplane. But there we go. Plugged in. Lights are flashing. Now, in the bright sunlight, you're not going to see these lights very well. So I probably am going to turn those off as soon as I get this bound to the transmitter. But we are connected. Wind's coming from that direction, folks, about three to five miles per hour. So I'm going to try to take off in that direction. But up and down connects the uh, controller to the drone. Let's make, make sure it can see it. And it looks like it can. Let's put it up like so. And yeah, I'm going to give it full throttle, see if it can go. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> it buries itself in the grass. So let me try it there. No. Nope. Tell you what, let's go over to the dirt and see if it'll take off off of dirt. So hold on, folks, while I do that. Also, let me turn off those lights. Lights are off. So we're going over to the dirt and see if it'll take off from dirt. Okay, we're over at the baseball dive in here. Let's see if I can take off from this, from a sandy surface here. Let's see if that'll work. So giving a throttle. And there we go. And I got a bit of a head and nose up. So reducing throttle. <laughs> this flies really nice. Cutting back throttle quite a bit. Let's go back over to where I originally flew from. <laughs> That's amazing. It flies really nice. I mean, really, I, I got hardly any throttle on at all. Let's see if I can bring it down with hard turns. It's way up there. I don't want it way up there. Reducing the throttle greatly. I'm doing porpoising. Not porpoising, just... <laughs> oh, such a gentle flyer, folks. Amazingly gentle. I'm giving it hard banks. Bring it toward me. Going by me there. Neat airplane, I like it. Really neat airplane. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, let's go to higher rate. It banks quite a bit harder. Reducing throttle, trying to bring it back down again. So I did not need to add anything to this. It flies very well. Like it. I like it a lot. So, yeah. This is very appropriate for beginner flyers. Very appropriate. Um, I think they'd like this. You know, if you're a brand new pilot and you just want to learn how to turn and how to go up and down using the throttle, this will be a good intro to, for you because it's very gentle. Just like oh, that, the pitch roll stick, it'll right itself. Give it a little throttle to come up a little bit higher. And now we do have a little bit of wind coming from my back here. Let's see if we can do some uh, slope soaring here on this ridge. Let's see if I can get some lift out of it. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, quite readily. Let me cut back that throttle and just glide a bit. It's flying quite well as a slope soar. Pretty neat airplane. <laughs> oh, oh, through the sun, as usual. Come down here. It's slope soaring off of this ridge line here. It's using the wind lift <laughs> and it's doing a darn good job. This is a real good glider, folks. It's so lightweight. 
hardly any throttle at all, and it's climbing, climbing, climbing. I better cut that off completely. We're just gliding now. Let's see how it glides. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Throttle up. <laughs> it doesn't glide very well. Once you, oh, it did a loop. It actually did a loop. Did you see that? Let's see if I could do that again. What I did was I went up, I cut the throttle, got it up real high, cut the throttle, then let it come down like that, then gave it full throttle. And it'll do a loop. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> it's cool. Let's do it again. Cutting throttle, let it drop like a rock, full throttle. Look at that loop. It did a loop again. A two channel that can do a loop. <laughs> That's how you do it with this one. Okay, I'm just barely any throttle all at all in this. But let's let's come down close again. So we showed how to do loops. We're getting closer. Zigging it around. It just wants to keep climbing because of that lift there. I got that ridge lift there. Now this would be a good indoor flyer too. Good indoor flyer also. But yeah, this is a really ingenious design this guy came up with. Whoever came up with this design here. Using that um, bottom there for uh, ground effect lift. Cutting the throttle. And then throw up. And there we go. I got another loop. It does loops. <laughs> does them quite readily. A two channel plane that loves to do loops. Going around. That's the gyros. You hear that? That's those gyros kicking in. Trying to stabilize it. Coming around. Neat airplane, isn't it? It'll do a loop with that. Just give it full throttle, folks, and it does a loop. Just give it full throttle, it does a loop automatically. Surprisingly. <laughs> I like this plane. Very easy to do a loop. Just throttle up. Throttle up and it does a loop. Neat airplane. See if, see if I can bring it down low and do that loop up close. Cut and throttle. Cut and throttle and ro rotating, rotating, bringing it around, bringing it around. Lower, 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 lower. Closer, closer. And throttle up. Wow. <laughs> Neato airplane. This one's neat. Supposedly the guy that designed this actually got a patent on it. You don't normally see that from these Chinese airplanes. But uh, I can see why he would patent it. It's a neat design. Coming down way up high. Coming down. Here's how I bring them down. Cut the throttle. Oh, my gosh, I gotta cut the throttle off completely to bring this one down. It don't want to descend. Hardly any throttle, folks. Hardly any. It just don't want to come down. Neat airplane. Yeah, I have fun with two channels too. Two channels can be fun too, like this one in particular. Do that loop, do that loop. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's real nice loops. Just give it full throttle, folks. Wow. <laughs> Neat, neat, neat plane. I like it. This is 
This is the coolest two channel I've seen so far to date. <laughs> it is. Wonderful flyer. Well, well done, whoever designed this. And that dihedral's kick it in too. Oops, oops, I'm not seeing. <laughs> I missed that loop. <laughs> I just took it on faith that it would do a loop and it did it. And bringing it close, bringing it close. Doing it again, right overhead. <laughs> Cutting throttle. This climbs like a banshee when you give it that throttle and then it'll, if you keep giving it the throttle again, it does a loop. Well done. Well done, airplane. For a two channel. <laughs> Very well done. Just trying to keep it close now so you can see it. Let's get a little closer to that lip and keep getting that. Oh, look at that lift. <laughs> keep using that slope soaring lift. <laughs> There's barely any throttle in it. it there, it's being buffeted right there. Get some of that. Get some of that lift. Okay, bring it in close again. So, yeah, this thing probably can fly a lot longer than 10 minutes. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> because I'm hardly giving it any throttle. And that's a 500 milliamp per hour. Wonderful plane. Am I still, is there a higher rate? Oh, 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 it doesn't matter. That's it, that's it. No more flight time. So that's its LVC cutoff. So the YF350, I like this plane. I like this plane a lot. It's got a lot uh, for beginner pilots. It's very appropriate for beginner pilots. Very easy to fly and does loops by just giving it full throttle. <laughs> so hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.